<laughs> Dude, no, I. <laughs> Alright, well, hello, stream. Uh, two minutes, and I'm setting up everything so that we can read again. Because, you know. Everything isn't good. Jay, no can hear you. Everything isn't good, but we'll read again. I don't know, you did. Oh, thank you. So, what are we drinking tonight? Cause we have quite, quite a, quite a few to do. Cause I'm. We have options. You want to do mead? You want to make mead? Mead, mead. Just the Adams family. <laughs> when you're an Adams, and when you're an Adams, oh, that was really loud. You hit your ankle. Owie. I graved the I graved the entire side of it. <laughs> Dude, how the fuck do you deal with that? Oh. What? I don't know that shit, dude. See? No. That's it. Owie. <laughs> Hello, stream. We're ready? We're, 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 yeah. You're stuffing your fucking face. Alright. <laughs> Beautiful! I'm gonna switch off characters or just keep reading chapter to chapter. Alright, could you give me some water, please? So that we're not dehydrated between the alcohol and reading. What? Oh, <gasps> we can make lemonada. We have enough lemons. I say lemons as if they're actual lem actually lemons, they're limes, but don't worry about that. Welcome back to um lemonadas. Yeah, dude, fucking love it. Um, welcome back because of real life shit and like stuff happened. We we really came back because you know. Reading, reading is always fun, and like making fun of this, <laughs> it, it, you know, it, it's not that we're not coping. It's that you know, what's coming, coming, because we love questionable deaths. We love fucking questionable deaths. It was either this or we watch a series again. Half Life. I'll still be awake like at eight. I, like fucking nine hours from now, because I don't go to sleep until then. Um. Yeah, it's 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 a midnight. Oh, okay. Um, not at all, Mrs. Bennett. However, with the sense for five dollars, could ask him. Oh wait, I read that. Where am I? Where I stop. She couldn't imagine what business he could have in town so soon as his arrival in Hertfordshire. And she began to fear that he might be always flying out from one place to another, and never settled in Netherfield as he ought to be. Lady Lucas quieted her fears a little by starting the idea of his being gone to London only to get a large party for the, for the ball. And a report soon followed that Mr. Binkley was to bring twelve ladies and seven gentlemen with him to the assembly. The girls grieved over such a number of ladies, but were comforted the, idea the day before the ball by hearing that instead of twelve, he only he brought only six of them from London, his five sisters and a cousin. But when the party entered, entered the assembly room, it consisted of only five together, all together. Mr. Bingley, his two sisters, the husband of the eldest, and another young man. Mr. Bingley was a good-looking gentleman like- Oh, I forgot about this. 
He had a pleasant countenance and easy, unaffected manners. His sisters were fine women with an air of decided fashion, and his brother-in-law, Mr. Ferrets, merely looked to the gentleman, but his friend, Mr. Darcy, soon drew the attention of the room by his fine, tall, handsome, fine, tall person, handsome features, non noble mien, and the report which of his general circ- circ- circulation within five minutes after his entry of his having ten thousand a year. The gentleman pron- pronounced him to be a fine figure of a man. The ladies declared him s- so much hamster- handsomer than Mr. Bingley. And he w- was looked at with such great admiration about half the evening, till his manners gave a great disgust, which turned the tide of his popularity, for he was discovered to be proud, and to be above his company, and above being pleased. And not at all his large estate in Derbyshire could ha- then have s- then save him from having a most forbidding disagreement countenance and being unworthy to be compared with his friend. Mr. Bingley had soon made himself acquainted with the one with all the principal people in the room. He was lively and unreserved, danced with every dance, and a- was angry that the ball closed so early, talked to giving one one himself an netherfield. That such amiable qualities must speak for themselves. What a contrast between him and his friend. Mr. Darcy danced only w- once with Mrs. Hurst and once with Miss Bingley, declined being introduced to any other lady and spent only spent the rest of the afternoon evening in, wa- in walking walking about the room speaking occasionally to one of his own party his character was decided he was proudest most disagreeable man in the world and everybody hoped that he would never come there again amongst the most violent against him was mrs bennett whose dislike of his general behavior was sharpened into particular resentment by having his sl- by his by his having slighted one of her daughters elizabeth bennett had been obliged by the scarcity of gentlemen to sit down for two dances and during part of that time, Mr. Darcy had been standing near enough for her to hear conversation between him and Mr. Bingley, who came from a dance a few minutes to press his friend to join. Come, Darcy, he said. I must have you dance. I hate to see you standing all about by yourself in this stupid manner. You had much better dance. I certainly shall not. You know how I detest it. Unless I am particularly acquainted with my partner at such an assembly as this, it would be insupportable. Your sisters are engaged, and there is no other woman in the room whom it would not be a punishment to me to stand with. <laughs> you know I can hear you, Jay. No one can hear you ramble. Come, come, come. Come, ramble. Wait. No, I was thinking, do we do we drink? Because we're drinking it every time there's a misogynistic moment. Uh, <laughs> Where the fuck are you going? I'm reading it. <laughs> Fucking dare you. Do that later. <laughs> Who's saying I should have certainly... I sh- Mr... I still don't know what the fucking third. Okay. It would not. It would not be a punishment to me to stand up with. Here's the thing. He's just. He's. He, I can't say he's anti social. I'm just like he's just an asshole. It's not misogynistic. It's not just like I. I wouldn't dare touch a woman, even if it, if even of this class. If he said that, we would drink. He's just an asshole. It's like, yeah, I don't want to dance with anyone. Don't touch me. <laughs> um, I want to be so fictitious as you are, cried Mr. Bingley. For a kingdom, upon my honor, I have never met so many pleasant girls in my life as I have this evening. And there are several of them, you see, uncommonly pretty. You are dancing with the only handsome girl in the room, said Mr. Darcy to the eldest Miss Bennet. Oh, she is the most beautiful creature I ever beheld, and there is one of her sisters sitting down just behind you who is very pretty. I dare say, very agreeable. Do let me ask my partner to introduce you. What do you which do you mean? And turned, oh, yeah, and turned around, he looked for a moment at Elizabeth's till, catching her eye. He withdrew his own and coldly said, She is tolerable, but not handsome enough to tempt me. I am in no humor at present to give consequence to young ladies who are slighted by other men. You had best return to your party and enjoy her smiles, for you are wasting your time with me. She's calling him a slut. She's calling her a slut. We drink. I'm sorry, dude. Okay, hold up. 
Open it for me. I have to up the counter, dude. You drink this drink, I forgot. Oh, so only I drink? Okay, that makes it easier for me. <laughs> oh wow dude no you don't drink yeah dude it fucking wow lovely if it was originally what was it what was the percentage it has been three hope it went up to six that is that is seltzer right now yeah. that is seltzer that is, dude, that is so amazing. <laughs> we're, <laughs> it's small, small portions. So, okay, let me continue. Um, where was I? Oh, Mr. Bingley followed his advice. Mr. Darcy walked up and Elizabeth remained with no, with no very cordial feelings towards him. She told the story, however, with a great spirit among her friends, for she had a lively, playful disposition, which delighted in anything ridiculous. The evening altogether passed off pleasantly to the whole family. Miss Bennet had seen her eldest daughter much admired by the netherfield the party. Miss Bingley had danced with her twice, and she had been dis in dis had been distinguishable by her sisters. Jane was much more gratified by his by this, as her mother could be, though in a quieter way. Elizabeth felt Jane's pleasure. Mary had <gasps> Jane's the fifth one. Mary had heard herself mentioned to Mrs. Bingley, to Miss Bingley. <laughs> as the most accomplished girl in the neighborhood and Catherine and Lydia had been fortunate enough t fortunate enough never to be without partners which was all that they had yet to l learn to care for at a ball they returned therefore in good spirits to Longbourn Longbourn? Bourne? Longbourn Longbourn, the village where they lived and of which they were and of which they were the principal inhabitants they found Mr. Fain Mr. Bent Mr. Bennett still up with a book he was regardless of time. And of the present occasion, he had a good deal of curiosity as to the events of the evening with which he, which had raised uh, such splendid expectations. He had rather hoped that his wife's views of a str stranger would be disappointed, but he soon found out that that had soon found out that he had a different story to hear. Oh, my dear Mr. Bennett, <laughs> as she entered the room. We had a most delightful evening, a most excellent ball. I wish you had been there. Jane was so admired, nothing could be like it. Everyone said how well she looked, and Mr. Bingley thought her quite beautiful, and danced with her twice. What do you think of that, my dear? He actually danced with her twice, and she was the only creature in the room that he asked a second time. First of all, he asked Mrs. Lucas. I was so vexed to see him stand up with her, but however, he did not admire her at all. Indeed, nobody can, you know. And he seemed quite struck with Jane as she was going down with the dance. Mm. Oh, um, what? How narcissistic. How narcissistic that the oldest sibling is Jane. Like the author? Yeah. I don't I don't I mean, this is probably written in her spare time. Like this is a romance gone wrong in real life for her, like her sister or her or a friend. That's such a weird it. No no dude. Cause it's Cause no real life relationship is like no in that story in that when was this written? Uh, I'm as I'm imagining this as a as a retold story in modern time, but with a twist. I'm like no 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 wait 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 I'm getting my facts wrong. Let's get this right. I don't know when it was written, but you can you can definitely go search it up, Jay. If you don't if you stop playing Star Wars. All right, so we, we won't know. Cause I'm not gonna go look it up. <laughs> um, I'm continue reading. Uh, where am I? Oh, uh, I lost where I am. Oh, so he inquired her who she was and got introduced and asked her for the next two. Then the two third he danced with Miss King, and the two fourth with Mary and Lucas, and the two fifth with Jane again, and the two sixth with Lizzie and. On the bull anger, if he had any compassion for me, 
cried her husband impatiently. He wouldn't have danced half so much. For goodness sake, say no more of his partners or that he had sprained his ankle in the first place. Oh, my dear, I am quite delighted with him. He is so excessively handsome, and his sisters are charming women. I never in my life saw anything more elegant than their dresses. I dare say the lace upon Mrs. Hurt's crown. Here she was inter interrupted again. Mr. Bennet protested against any description of finery. She was therefore... Uh, she was therefore obligated to speak another branch of the subject and, re and related with such bitterness of spirit and some exaggeration the shocking words of Mr. Darcy. Does he... Okay. Question. For this segment. Does... Uh, he steers over the conversation, but is it because they're poor? I'm guessing because like they they themselves cannot um, afford finery or luxury. It's not misogynistic. 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 There we go. I, the S and G confused me. Um, because I don't know if it's like I don't know if he's like turning it away because he doesn't want to hear fashion or because he because they can't afford it so he doesn't want to indulge her which is like also a little bit I love discussing it's not much misogynistic because he's he's embarrassed by it he is embarrassed he's embarrassed but he's not but he's not, uh, 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 you stop, you stop, you go, get away. <laughs> um, I'll keep reading that. Uh, he's not misogynistic because, uh, uh, because he is saying, uh, we don't have that kind of, it, I'll be real, he has five fucking daughters. Four. He has to give a drowry for every one of them. Yeah, dude. I mean, um, but he's not interested in that. No, the wife it, is. It, it, it's more of like it's a representation of me because you have you have never because no he's just embarrassed. He, yeah, like he's just embarrassed about it. He's just embarrassed about it because he can't give his, his wife that. It, it could be that, or I, I don't know. Is is it is definitely like oh it's luxury. We cannot talk about that. Like it is definitely something along the lines of that, but we don't know why because it's so vague. If if, if he said. Uh, don't look at something that you can't have. Mm. That's a little bit awesome. A little bit. You're, you're, you're coming after you, Mr. Bennett. And Mr. fucking Darcy Buff. Coming after your ass. Alright. But I can assure you, she added, that Lizzie does not lose... That, does, that Lizzie does not lose much by not suiting his fancy, for he is the most discreetable, horrid man. Not at all worth praising. Pleasing. So high and so conceited that there is no endearing him. He walked here, so he walked there, fancying himself so very great, not handsome enough to dance with. I wish you had been there, my dear, to have given him one of your down set downs. I quite detest the man. That's it. Chapter four. I'm still feeling That's great. shouldn't have done that it's fine chapter four when jane and elizabeth were alone the former who had been cautious in her praise of mr bingley before expressed her to just how very much she admired him he is just what an odd man ought to be said she sensible good humored lively and i've never seen such happy manners so much ease with such a with such perfect breeding. It's perfect good breeding. That's misogynistic. That very... I have to drink. Ah, oh, shit. Well, it is, it's objectifying. It is objectifying. Misogynistic. Because she's taking away the humanism of him. And turning him to an object. Here, hold my mic. I'm holding it. 
Because I have no idea if uh, misogynistic is like only specifically for women, or if it can't be applied to men. But no, yeah, strong, strongly prejudiced against women. What's strongly prejudiced against men, dude? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I heard that. No one in the stream heard that. I have to deal with that, dude. Okay. Uh, if you want to keep reading, it's a shot. Let me update the counter. Sorry. Oh, so hello everybody to the chat. If they are there, if anyone's viewing this, um, we'll, we'll be just taking our time because this is very fun. Uh, but yeah, we will be discussing things. We will be talking about them. If you do want to take in, a, in your own spin, uh, a about anything really just talk to us about that because we love to have an in-depth discussion about it absolutely and you did not update why didn't you update <laughs> the shot taken oh i did update Ooh. Um, back to you, Jay. Yeah. Um, Lucy alive with good breeding stuff. He is oh so handsome, replied Elizabeth. Which a young man ought to be, although I ought to uh, like ought to likewise to be if he possibly can. His character is thereby complete. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> What is- what is this? There's so much objectifying, what the fuck? Yeah, there is. Oh, where, where I- I- the men- the men's part was already just like, haha, <laughs> oh no. Uh, they're pretty, but they're- but like, I- I have high- I have better standards than that. Which is, you know, I- What the fuck? <laughs> okay. I'm fucking- I'm fucking- they're- they're such- what the fuck? I it, 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 eighteen thirty. Oh my fuck! I don't know why it's way more harsher. Fucking oh shit! The one middle. <laughs> I don't know why it's way more harsher as the women are judging the men. It's very much like if you got money. Money, bro. It's like it, it, I don't know if this is the start of that era or not, but um, it, it is. It is because they talked about his paycheck, his annual income. Yeah, because Mr. Darcy has ten thousand. Uh, Bingley, little bitch ass, has four. <laughs> I will laugh the entire time when I read that, dude. Very funny. Anyway, anyway, fucking g god damn. Oh my god. I was very much f flattered by by his asking me to d to dance a second time. I didn't expect such a compliment. Did you? For you? Did 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 not you? I love I love I love this little thing. <laughs> I'm fucking I'm fucking aneurysm. Ane I'm having an aneurysm. What the fuck? I hate always being like this. God. Fuck it. I I did for you, but that is one great difference between us. Compliments always take you surprise, surprise, but me never. What could have been more natural than his asking you again? He could not help seeing that you were one of the five. You're about five times as pretty as every other woman in the room. No thanks to his calorant for that. Well, he certainly is very agreeable. No. Ooh. I give you leave to like him. You have liked many a stupider person. Dear Lizzie. Oh, you have such a great deal to adapt, you know, to, li to like people in general. You never see a fault in anybody. All the world are good and agreeable in your eyes. I never see you speak ill of a human being in your life. I would not wish to be haste in censoring anyone. I always speak what I think. I know you do. That it, and it is 
that, which makes me makes the wonder. With your good sense, to be honest, blind to the follies and nonsense of others. Affectionate. Affection? Affection, yes. Affection of candor. Affection. Affection? Affection? Affection of candor is common, common enough. One meets with it everywhere. But to be candid without ostentation or design to take the good of everybody's character and make it still better and say nothing of the bad belongs to you alone. And so you like this man's sister too, don't you? Their manners are not equal to his. Certainly not at first. But they are very pleasing women when you converse with them. Miss Bingley is to live with her brother and keep his house. And I very much mistake it if we shall not find a very charming neighbor in her. Elizabeth listened in silence. What was it? Their behavior, at least assembly. <coughs> you touched me and I go, Wah. What do you mean? At the assembly had not been calculated to please in general with more quickness of observance and then less plissy. Pl plassy? Placy of temper than her. Then her sister would unsaid a slade assailed unassailed see unassailed I you are my dictionary by any attention to herself which she was very little disposed to prove them they were in fact very fine ladies not deficient in good humor when they were pleased nor in the power of making themselves agreeable when they choose to choose it but proud and concentrate and Conceited, fuck, and conceited, they were rather handsome. Had been educated in one of the first private cemeteries in town, had a fortune of twenty thousand pounds, were in the habit of spending more than they fought, more than they ought, and by associating with people of power, and were therefore in their respect entitled to think the well of themselves and meanly of others. They were respected family in the north of England, a circumstance. Ooh. A circ fuck, okay. A circumstance more deeply impressive of their memories than that of their brother's fortune, and their own had been acquired by trade. Mr. Bingley inherited properly to the amount of nearly a hundred thousand pounds from his father, who intended to buy purchase an estate, but did not live to do it. Mr. Bingley intended it, intended it like other, like likewise, and sometimes made choice of his country. But now, but as he now provided. As now, wah, but as he now was provided with a good house and the liberty, liberty of a manor, it was doubtful to many of those who, who best knew the easiness of his temper, whether he might spend the rem remnants of his days at Netherfield or and leave the next generation to his purchase. His sisters were anxious for having an estate of his own, but though he was now established as a tenant, Miss Bingley was by no means unwilling to present, preside at his table. Ertz, who was who was who had married a man of more fashion than fortune, less, less disposed to a less, dis ooh, less dis disposed to consider his his home as her home when it suited her. Mr. Bingley had not been a been a maid two years when he was tempered by an ac accidental recommendation to look at the Netherfield house. He did look at it and into and into it half an hour. With, was pleased with the situation with was pleased with the situation and the principal rooms. As far as satisfied what with the owner said is in its praise and took it immediately. Between him and Darcy there was very there was a very steady friendship in spite of great opposition opposition of character. Bingley was endeared but to Darcy by the easiness, openness, and du dutility. Ooh, ductility? 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 Dictility? Delicious? Mm. Delicious? No. Delicious? Delicious? Dutility, yeah. Ductility? Ductility? Ductility of his temper, though no. Disposition un could offer greater contrast to his own, though with his own he never appeared dissatisfied with the sh on the strength of Darcy's regard. Bingley had the firmest re re whoa, whoa, re real lace, real lace, real lace, real lace, 
re relays, relies, relents, Jesus fuck, relents of his, and of his judgment, of his judgment, reliance. reliance, I was like Lance, it's the Lance at the end with an I, what the fuck, uh, uh, on the, no, where am I, and, and of his judgment, the highest opinion in understanding Darcy was the superior, but he was by no means deficient, but Darcy was clever, he was the same time haughty, reserved and fastuous, and his manners, though well bred, were not in the writing. In the retrospect, his friend was greatly the average. Fling was sure of being well liked whenever he appeared. Darcy was continuously given offense. That matter of which they spoke of the I I took an antic and an, an accent the entire way through. I did. I can't stop that. The manner of which they spoke of the Marty assembly was sufficient char characteristic. Bingley, Bingley had never met with more with more pleasant people or pretty girls in his life. Everyone had been the most kind and tentative, attentive to him. There had been no formalities, no stiffness. He had soon found acquainted with all in the room, and as to Miss Bennet, he could not have conceived an angel more beautiful. Darcy, on the contrary, had never seen a collection of people in whom there was little beauty and no fashion, for none of whom he had felt the smallest interest, and from none received either attention nor pleasure. I like nor better than or. Miss Bennet he acknowledged to be pretty, but she, but she smiled too much. Mrs. Hertz and her sister allowed it to be so, and they still admired her and liked her pronounced her to be a sweet girl and one whom they would not object to know more of. Miss Bennet was therefore established as a sweet girl and their brother felt authorized by such commandment to think of her as, she, as he choose. Chapter 5 Chapter 5 Alright. I am enjoying this. <laughs> what do you mean it's work? <laughs> Chapter 5. Oh, wait, let me check stream. Let me check chat. Get away from me. <laughs> it's only me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find anything misogynistic, dude? Which was very out of, like, very much just like, they're a good stock and very, a very blunt in that aspect. I was like surprised. I, I, yeah, okay. Um, uh, like, oh chapter five. Within a short walk of Longburn lives a family with whom the Bennets were particularly intimate. Sir William Lucas have were particularly intimate. Okay. Sir William Lucas had been for had been formerly in trade in Meerton. Meerton? Meryton. Meryton, where he had made a tolerable fortune, raised him to the honor of knighthood by an address to the king during his moriety. Mayoriety. Mayoralty. Mayoral Mayor 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 Royalty. Mayorship. I don't give a shit. Mayorship. During his, I'm, I'm During his <laughs> governmental run. <laughs> During his governmental run. Okay. The distinction has perhaps been too strongly. It had given him disgust to his business and to his residence in a small market town. And in quitting them both, he had removed with his he had removed with his family to a house about a mile from Meryton, demoted, denominated from from that period Lucas Lodge, where he can. Think with pleasure of his own importance and, and unshackled by business, occupying himself solely in, in being civil to all the world. For though elated by his rank, it did not re render him supercilious. On the contrary, he was all attention to everybody by nature, indefensive, friendly, and obligate. Obligi no, obligating. Okay. Obligating. Obligating. Fucking the the i the i g and the i n g are fucking me up. Oblying his presentation at St James that had made him courteous. Lady Lucas has a very good 
was a very good was a very good kind of woman, not too clever to be of value neighbor to Mrs. Bennet. They had several children. The eldest of them, a sensible and tall young woman, about th- twenty seven, was Elizabeth's intimate friend. That the Miss Lucases and the Miss Bennets should meet to talk over a ball was absolutely necessary. How do, what is this woman on woman violence, dude? Lady Lucas was a very good kind of woman, not too clever to be a valuable never neighbor to Mrs. Bennet. Um, no, it's just it's the thought of it. It is woman on woman violence, dude. I cannot. <laughs> Like, it is just, just, you're not the sharpest tool in the shed. I don't like you. It's like, what? <laughs> I mean, it is, it, I'm just going to point it out, but I'm going to think about it. Um, like, there is literally no need. That is a sentence that could be taken out. There is no need for that. Uh, yeah. All you had to say was Lady Lucas had a lot of children. That's all you had to say. That you could have put that. Yeah. Like, no, it's not even, like, a semicolon. They had several children. <laughs> like, it's just... She wasn't very fucking smart for Mrs. Bennett. They had kids. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Continuing. Um, that the Miss Lucases and the Miss Bennett should talk... Should meet to talk over a ball that was absolutely necessary. In the morning after the assembly brought the former to Longburn to hear and to communicate. You... Begin the evening well, Charlotte, said Mrs. Bennet with civil self-command to Miss Lucas. You were Mr. Finney's first choice. Yes, but he seemed to like a second better. Oh, you mean Jane, I suppose, because he danced with her twice. To be sure that he that did seem as if he admired her. Indeed, I rather believe he did. I heard something about it, but I hardly know what. So think about Mr. Robinson. Perhaps you mean what I heard between him and Mr. Robinson. Did Nam I mention it to you? Mr. Robinson asked how he uh, how he liked our merits and assemblies and whether he did not think there were a great many pretty in the room. Pretty women in the room. In which he th- in what and what oh sorry. And which he thought the prettiest. And his answer immediately on the last question Oh the eldest Mrs. Bennet, beyond a doubt. There cannot be two opinions on that point. Upon my word! Well, that is very decided indeed. This does seem as if, but however, it may all come to nothing, you know. My overhearings were more to the purpose than yours, Eliza, said Charlotte. Mr. Dory is not so well with listening to you as a friend, is he? Poor Eliza! Do only be just tolerable. I beg you not to put too much into Lizzie's head to be vexed by his ill treatment, for he is such a disagreeable man that it would be quite a misfortune to be liked by him. Mrs. Long told me last night that he sat close to her for half an hour without once opening his lips. Are you quite certain, ma'am? Is not there a little mistake? said Jane. I certainly saw Mr. Darcy speaking to her. Aye, because she asked him at last how he liked Netherfield, and he could not help to be answering her but she said he seemed quite angry at being spoken at Miss Binkley told me said Jane that he never speaks much um, unless among his intimate acquaintance with them he is remarkably agreeable I do not believe a word of it my dear if he had been so very agreeable he would have talked to Miss Long but I guess how it was everyone says he is says that he is she says, everybody says that he is eat up with pride. Is it, yeah. Eat up with, ate up. Whatever. Eat. I know. I eat. want eight. I want there to put eight, but no, it's is, is eat up with pride. <laughs> and I dare say he would have had. Ex- yeah, dude, ate up. Ugh. And I dare say he had heard somehow that Mrs. Long does that Mrs. Long does not keep a carriage and had come to the ball in a hack chase. I did not mind. I do not mind his not talking to Mrs. Long," said Mrs. Lucas. "But I wish he had done to Eliza. Another time, Lizzie," said Mother. 
I'm confusing the voices because like I cannot tell who's who yeah. until after. It would have been easier with the script no. to defi- to 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 know who was speaking. No, uh, I guess so, but very much. So. If it's, it's, I guess so, but very much just like if they were to k- say, if they were to be a character and they say the character's name, and it's in the same font. No, like okay, it'll be Jay. It'll be one giant, and then the dialogue, and then it'll probably be parentheses of what they're doing during that dialogue. Yeah, most dialogues only have that one stage. Yeah, there's stage directions, dude. Yeah, it's just not. It's like, <laughs> it's not gonna give a description of them. No, of course not. It's, not, it's gonna. It's just gonna be like the enter stage left, enter stage right. Or sat down, or picked up something, or did something, something. But it, it. I just, I just need to know who's fucking talking. I don't know who's fucking talking. Mm-hmm. So, uh, continuing. Uh, that's one complaint with the novel because I don't know who the fuck is speaking most of the time. I mean, yeah, until after, and it's like, oh, I'm Lucas, uh, Miss Lucas. Oh shit, I'm fucking um Mrs. Bennett. It's like, uh, where's Lizzie and all this? Like, she's. Anyway. Yeah. Another time, Lizzie said her mother, "I would not dance with him if I were you." I believe, ma'am. I may safely promise you never to dance with him. His pride," said Mrs. Lu- said Miss Lucas, "does not offend me so much as pride often does, because there is an excuse for it. One cannot wonder that so uh, that so very fine a young man with tors- with family." Fortune, everything in this favor should think highly of himself. If I may so express it, he has a right to be proud. That is very true, replied Elizabeth. And I could easily forget his pride if it had not mortified mine. Pride, observed Mary, who piqued herself upon the solidity of soliloquy, solidity of her reflections. It's a very common failing, I believe. By all that I have ever read, I was I am convinced that it is very common indeed. The human nature is particularly prone to it, and that there are very few of us who do not cherish a feeling of self complacency on the score of some quality or other real or imaginary. Vanity and pride are different things, though the words are often used anonymously. A person may be proud without being vain. Pride relates more to our opinion of ourselves, vanity to what we would have others think of us. You think, you think people confuse pride and vanity? I think a lot of the time that they do, because they've confused their vanity with their self worth, and then their pride with um, being crushed by their self doubt. Yeah, because other than pride and vanity, vanity and pride. There's also like autistical and and naive in the sense of like you could be too much and come off as arrogant, and you could be less vain and come as naive. It's it's very much. How do I do th- what? What? <laughs> anyway, then, then. Thank you. If I were as rich as Mrs. Darcy, Mr. Darcy, cried a young Lucas, who came with his sisters, I should not care how proud I was. I would keep a pack, a pack of foxhounds, and drink a bottle of wine a day. Then you would drink a great deal more than you ought, said Mrs. Bennet. If I were to see you at it, I should take away your bottle directly, the boy protested. That should... Should I just go with like a like a more male, masculine like yeah, sure. narration then? The boy protested that she, that she should not. She continued to declare that she would, and the argument ended only with the visit. Ah, chapter six, bro, bro. I wasn't even. 
Do you finally decide to narrate your voice? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing at you. Fuck Amazon. Anyway, as I play Star Wars, I go wait. Here you go, play. No. Chapter 6. The ladies of Longburn soon waited on those of Nayfield. The visit will soon return in due form. Miss Bennett's pleasing manners grew on the will of Mr. H- Mrs. Hutz. Mrs. Hut Hertz and Miss Bingley. And though the mother was fond to be into- found to be intolerable, the sis- younger sister is not worthy, not worth speaking to. A wish of being acquainted with them was expressed by the t- towards the two eldest. By Jane, this attention was received with the greatest pleasure. But Elizabeth saw through the superliciousness. <laughs> <laughs> Super silly. Super silly. S- s- no. <laughs> Super silly and Sicilian. Sicilian. Goes up and down. And their treatment of everybody hardly except excepting even her sister. And could not like them. Ooh, like them. Though their kindness to Jane, such as it was, had a value as arising in all probability from the influence of their brother's admiration and they're generally evident whether they meet that he did admire her and to her it was it was equally evident that Jane was yielding to the preferred preference which she had begun to attain him for from the first and was in a way very much in love but she considered with pleasure that it had not been very likely to be discovered by the world in general, since Jane united with such great strength of feeling, a composure of temper, and a uniform cheerfulness of manner which would guard her from the suspicion of the impertinence. Impertinence? 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 Yeah, I'm getting better. <laughs> she mentioned this to her friend, Miss Lucas. It may be pleasant, replied Charles, to be. Imperniate? Imperniate. To be. I should have taken it for a second. <laughs> <We're always laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> to be imposed on the public. Uh, uh, on the public in such a case, but it is sometimes a disadvantage to be so very guarded. If a woman conceals her affection with the same skill of the object of it, she may lose the opportunity of fixing him. G- that's a fucking that all of that all of that is a com- is a, is is her all of that is her part. Someone speaking. Someone speaking. Charlotte speaking. What? Okay. Very guarded. Oh no, where? A woman conceals her affection with the same skill of the from the. Object of it, she may lose the opportunity of, fi- of fixing him, and it will then be poor consolation to believe the world equally in the dark. There is so much of gratitude or fan- vanity, 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 vanity in almost every attachment that is not safe to leave to itself. We can, we can all begin freely. A slight preference in nature enough, and that is natural enough. But there are very few of us who have heart enough to be really in love without encouragement. In nine cases out of ten, a woman had better show more affection than she feels. Bingy likes your sister undoubtedly, but he may never do do more than like her if she does not help him on. But she does help him on, as such as her nature as much as her nature will allow it. If I perceive her re- re- her regard for him, he must be a simpleton. Indeed, not to discover it, too. Remember, Eliza, that he does not know Jane's disposition as you do. 
But if a woman is partial to a man and does not endeavor to conceal it, he must find it out. Perhaps he must. But if he sees enough of her, but though Bingley and Jane, and Jane meet tolerably often, it is never for many hours together, and they will always see each other in large mixed parties. It is impossible that every moment should be in employed in conversation together. Jane should therefore make the most of every half hour in which she can command his effect attention. Fuck, I almost said affection. Ooh. We don't want that. We don't want that. <laughs> she is when she is secure of him, then there will be more leisure for falling in love as much as she chooses. Your plan is your plan is a good one, right? replied Elizabeth. Where nothing is in question but the desire of being well married. And if I were determined to get a rich husband or any husband, I dare say I should adopt adopt it. Yeah, the plan? Okay. But these are not Jane's feelings. She is not the acting by design. As yet, she cannot be certain of the degree of her own regard, nor of its reasonableness. She has known him only a fortnight. She danced four dances with him at Merton. She saw him one morning at his own house and since then dined with him in company four times. This is not quite enough to make her understand his character. Not that you re represent it. Had she merely dined with him, she might have discovered whether he has good appetite. But you must remember that four evenings has been also been spent together. Four evenings may do a great deal. <laughs> yes, those these four evenings have enabled them to assert that they were both like Ven what Ven 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 them Ven them Ven them What the fuck? I don't know what that is. We're look it up. We're look it up upstream. What the fuck is that word? I don't want to know what that word is. Waiting so long. Give me a rip. What does it mean? What's Gibby thinking about? Card game. What the fuck? Hold up. What does that mean? Give me the meaning and definition. Yes, please. Fuck everything. Give me the meaning and definition. Twenty one. Meaning and definition. Twenty one. What the fuck does that mean? No, wait. Wait. It's a brand. It's something to be consumed or eaten. I. We're not gonna touch. We're not gonna touch the dictionary. Okay. They both, both like them better than commissure. Com commissure. Commissure. Commiss. Com commiss. Commiss. What the fuck? What's this one? Commerce? It sounds like common, commoner, but it's like commish, commish, commish. But with respect to any other, any other leading characters, character, characteristic, I do not imagine that they will be unfolded. They had, they had that much has been unfolded. Well, said Charlotte, I wish Jane success with all my heart, and if she were, were married to him tomorrow. I should think she had a good chance of happiness as if she were to study his character for a twelfth month. Happiness in marriage is entirely a matter of chance. If the dispositions of the parties are ever so well known to each other or ever so similar beforehand, it does not it does not advance their facility in the least. They always continue to grow sufficiency like un like unlike afterwards to their short vexation. It is better to know as little as possible to the defects of the person with whom you are to pass your life. You'll make me laugh, Charlotte, but it is not the s it is not sound. You know it is not sound. You will never act this way yourself. 
occupied in observing Miss Bingley's attention to her sister, Eli Elizabeth. Oh, fuck. Was far suspecting that she may turn herself into becoming an object of some interest in the eyes of his friend. This Dar Mr. Darcy had a, had a, had had at first scarcely allowed her to be pretty. Oh my fuck, that's misogynistic. Mr. Darcy had at had at first scarcely allowed her to be pretty. He looked at her without admiration at the ball, but when they next me, he took her only to criti criticism. Woo! That's a drink for me. But no sooner had he made it. But no sooner had he made it. Fuck. I'm meeting. I'm meeting. I'm really I'm meeting. Shot, shot time. Shot I'm time. Meeting. It's shot time. Oh we peaked. We peaked. I'm so sorry, stream. But, but we got the. You've taken more shots than me, and I hate that. <laughs> I want more. I know, it's so good. Yeah, hold on. Freezer. And up. Okay, dive. Okay. Sure you guess what? Fuck it. We're going. Uh, uh, it's a long paragraph. I, I lost my spot. But had he no, no sooner made it clear to himself and his friends that she hardly has had a good feature in her face than he began to find it rendered uncommon and uncommonly intelligent intelligent by the beautiful expression of her dark eyes to, to this discovery succeed with some of the others fine though he had detected with a critical eye more than one filly of s perfectly symmetrical and sym symmetry in her form she he was forced to acknowledge ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, where am i he was forced to acknowledge her figure to be light and pleasing, and in spite of his asserting of her manners were not those of the fashionable world, he was caught on by their easy, by their easy playfulness. Of this, she was perfectly unaware to her. He was the, he was only the man who he he, who made himself agreeable nowhere, and who had not thought her handsome enough to dance with. He began to wish no more for he fucking it's a one sided It's one sided <laughs> Mr Darcy looks at looks at fucking Elizabeth and goes Huh nothing to look at Or is no, there? nothing nothing Ooh look at her She's fucking look Woo <laughs> Look at her look at her symmetrical body <laughs> fucking asshole there. Bro <laughs> You're not good enough Maybe you are. <laughs> she just, oh my god, he's at, he wants to dance with her now. How stupid is this fucker? Because, like, in both, like, the movie, and I'm guessing as well as the play, we don't really fucking... Well, I haven't seen the play, I want to see the play. Like in, like, in the movie specifically, it's like... Um... Like, it was very... His affection was very off-put. We only see Elizabeth's side of the story the entire time. Not like we don't see Mr. Darcy going, Oh yeah, no, she kinda fun. Like at no point does he ever tolerate her. It's and then like he chases after her and it's like, Whoa, I love you. It's like, what the fuck are you on about? You looked at me and said fuck you. You looked at me and said fuck you. What do you mean you love me? Like she absolutely looked at him and said, Dance and he said, No, thank you. And then she went about Day. I was just like, no, thank you, harlot. <laughs> and then he got jealous at every fucking turn. I was like, what the fuck are you on about, dude? Yeah. You, at every turn, have disappointed every expectation. Yeah. Because I feel like if they if they done the story both sides, it would have made more sense. It would have made this. This helps. This helps. But I will continue to on put uh, to to put my fucking foot down that in any iteration that Mister Darcy returns a feeling, he was the one to fall first. Always. <laughs> Where am I? You've distracted me. You've distracted me. Cause you fucking surprised me, dude. Like I had no fucking clue that he had feelings for her first. Mm -hmm. Where am I? Where? Am he w he began to wish no more of her, and as a step towards conversing with her with her himself, attended to attended to her to her conversation with others. His Doing so drew her notice. It was at Sir William's loose Lucas's, where a large where a large party was assembled. Where, what? 
What does this? What does Mister Darcy mean? As she said, she said she to Charlotte. My, oh uh, no, fuck, wrong character. Shit. What does Darcy? What does does what does Mister Darcy mean? Said she to Charlotte. By listening to my conversation with the car, with con, Colonel, Colonel. That's Colonel. 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 Colonel, Colonel oh. Forster. Colonel. KFC, KFC, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> At a hydrate. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to lose my voice. I have such long chapters. You do, and I don't know why, I don't know why you more, mine are short. Like, they're exponentially, exponentially short. Exponentially, fucker. Exponentially safe, mother... In the beginning. In the beginning. <laughs> that is a question. Wait, what? The, who's who? Who? Who's who? Okay, Charlotte. That is a question. I lost your voice. I know, dude. Fuck. That is a question. That is. That is. That is. That is a question which Mr. Garcia Gar- Gar- can only answer. But if he does it anymore, I shall. Cr- I shall certainly let him know that I only. S- I see what he what he is about. He is a very. S- Satrical, satrical eye, and I do not begin to by being impertinent, impertinent myself. <laughs> Fuck! I shall soon grow afraid of him. On his approaching them, on his approaching them soon afterwards, though, without seemingly to have any intention of speaking, Miss Lucas defiled her friend to, to mention such a subject to him, which immediately provoked Elizabeth to do it. She turned to him and said, "Do you not?" Think, Mr. Darcy, that I expressed myself uncommonly with just now while I was teasing Colonel Colonel Forster to give us a ball at Mer- Forster, yeah. Forster, 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 my name Forster, me <laughs> at Merton with great energy. Oh, fuck, I have to do a, I have to do a man voice. Oh, no. With the great energy, there's always a subject of which bring which makes a lady energetic. You are severe with us. Will be her. Ooh, Miss Lucas, new voice. Will be her turn soon to be teased, said Miss Lucas. I am going to open the instrument, Eliza, and you know what follows. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? I don't know. It will be Elizabeth. You are a very strange creature, by by way of a friend, always wanting to play me to play and sing before every anybody and everybody. If my vanity had taken a musical turn, you would have been in yeah invaluable. But as it is, I would rather sit not sit down before those who who must be in the habit of hearing the very best performers. On Miss Lucas's preserve preserve preserving, however, she added. Very well. If it must be so, it must. And gravely, gravely gla- glancing at Mr. Darcy, as if I, as there is a fine old saying, which everybody here, of course, is familiar with. Keep your breath, cool your porridge. And I shall keep mine to swill my song. Amazing. Fucking what the fuck is that? Qu- what the fuck is that pro? What the fuck is that proverb? Keep your breath to cool your fucking porridge. What the fuck? I love that. Keep your breath to cool your pores. What the fuck? <laughs> off with you. <laughs> it's just, it is just piss off. Her performance was pleasing, though, by no means capital. After her song or two, and before she could reply to the entries of several that she, that she could sing again, she was eagerly su- succeed. She was eagerly succeeded at the instrument by her sister Mary, who, having in consequence of Con- con- consequence of being the only plain one in the family, worked hard for an Audrey and accomplishments, was given impatience for display. Impatient. Mary had neither genius nor taste, and though vanity had given her application, it had given her likewise a pendant, paid, paid, in, paid in error and conceited matter, manner, which would have injured a higher degree of excellency than she reached. Elizabeth, easy and unaffected, had been, lis- had been listened to with much more pleasure, though not playing half so well. And Mary, at the end of the c- concert, 
Concero, Concero, Concero. Yeah, after a long Concero, was glad to purchase praise and gratitude by Scottish and Irish heirs, at the su at the request of her younger sisters, who, with some of the Lucases, and and two or three officers, joined eagerly in dancing at the at one end of the room. Mrs. Darcy stood near, silent, in told indignation, indignation, indignation. At such a mood of passing the evening, to the exertion of all conversation was too, exclusion of all conversation was too engrossed by his thoughts to perceive that Sir William Lucas was his neighbor. Thus, Sir William, till thir till Sir William thus began, what a charming amusement for young people these days, Mister Darcy. There is nothing like dancing at all. I consider it as one of the fine refinements of polished society. Certainly, sir, and is. It has the advantage also of being in, va in vogue amongst the less polished societies of the world. Every savage can dance. Sir William only smiled. Your friend performs delightfully. He paused. He, he continued after a pause, only seeing Bingley join the group. And I doubt that you are not adept in the science yourself, Mr. Darcy. You saw me dance at the Martin, I believe. Merton, I believe, sir. Yes, indeed, and receive no inconsiderable pleasure from the sight. Do you often dance at St. James? <laughs> so many voices. <laughs> Never, sir. Do you think that would be a proper compliment to the place? <laughs> it is a compliment which I... Never pay to any place if I can avoid. You have a town. You have a house in town. I conclude. I was not in character. You have a house in <laughs> town. I conclude. <laughs> I had to. I had to. His voice is entirely more. Is 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 his voice entirely based on Morf Mark Morfit Morfdash? Kitty, Morfit Morfdash. <laughs> Mr. Darcy bowed. Mr. Darcy bowed. I had once, I had once had some thought of fixing in town myself, for I am fond of superior society. But I do not, but I did not feel quite certain that the air of London would agree with Lady Lucas. <laughs> he paused in hopes of an answer, but his companion was not disposed to make any, and Elizabeth at that instant moved toward, moving towards them. He had... He was struck with the action of doing a very, a very gallant thing, and called out to her, "My dear Miss Eliza, why are you not dancing, Mrs. Dart? Wait, who? William said that. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What? Well, <laughs> you see why I want the fucking skirt back? No. Okay. It, it's 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 fucking Sir William." Okay, it's Mr. William. No, he's introducing Eliza to uh, Elizabeth to Mr. Mr. Archie. My dear Miss Eliza, why are you not dancing? Mr. Darcy, you must allow me to present this young lady to you as a de very desirable partner. You cannot refuse to dance. I am sure when so much beauty is before you. And taking her hand, he would have given it to Mr. Darcy, who, though extremely surprised, was not unwilling to receive it, when she instantly drew back and with some discomposure to Mr. William. Indeed, sir, I have not had... Ooh. Elizabeth said that. No, because this the what Mr. Darcy asked Elizabeth again. Yeah, that's that's him. <laughs> that's him? Yeah. The least intention of dancing. I am trending up as a person I have no idea. The one who moved this way was Elizabeth. I know, but okay, so is it Elizabeth? It is Elizabeth. That's Mr. Darcy. Oh no, that's right. That's fucking uh William because he's a well, he's the only one that says Mr. Elizabeth. Eliza. Indeed, sir. I have not, I have not the least intention of dancing. I entreat you not to suppose. I entreat you not to su 
suppose 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 what suppose suppose mm -hmm. suppose that i move this way in order to beg for a partner mr darcy with a grave pr purport pr 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 parody requested to be allowed with the honor of her hand but in vain elizabeth was determined nor did sir william at all shake her purpose by his attempt at persuasion you excel so much in the dance, Miss Eliza. It would be cruel to deny me, to deny me the happiness of seeing you. And though this gentleman dislikes the amusement in general, he ha can have no objection, I'm sure, to oblige us for one half hour. Mr. Darcy, Mr. Darcy is all oh, politeness," said Elizabeth, smiling. "He is indeed. But considering the indulgence, my dear Miss Eliza." We cannot wonder at his compliments, and for who would object to such a partner? Elizabeth looked archly and turned away. Her existence had not injured her with the gentleman, and she was, and he was thinking of her with some compliment, comp, compliment, 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 Compliance, 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 complacency, complacency. Yeah, and with that was a coasting by Miss Bingley. I can guess the subject of reverie. I should imagine not. You are considering how insupportable it would be to pass many evenings in this manner in such a society, and indeed, I am quite, I am quite of your opinion. I was never more annoyed the instability, and yet the noise, and never, the nevertheless. And yet the self-importance of all those people who I give to hear your structures on them. Your conjecture is totally wrong, I assure you. My mind has more agree agreeable engagement. I have been meditating with on the great very pleasure of the which of my which a pair of fine eyes in the face of pretty woman can bestow. Miss Bingley immediately fixed her eyes. On his face and desired and desired and desired him and desired what the fuck and desired him he and desired he would tell her what lady was, had the credit of his first reflections. Mr. Darcy replied with great with great in, interpedity. What the fuck? Interpe inter in interpedity. Miss Elizabeth. Miss Elizabeth. Miss Elizabeth. Elizabeth Bennet. Miss Elizabeth Miss Elizabeth Elizabeth Bennet, repeated Miss Bingley. I'm all astonishment. I am all astonishment. How long has been has she been such a fav favorite? And pray, where am I to wish you joy? That is that is the question which I expect you to answer. A lady's, a lady's imagination is very rapid. It jumps from admiration to love, from love to matrimony in a moment. I know you I knew you would be wishing me joy. Nay, if you are serious about it, I shall consider the matter absolutely settled. You will be having a charming mother-in-law indeed. And, of course, she will be she will always be at a per 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 is it? What gave me a rumor? Mwah! 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 With you. He listened to her with perfect indifference while she chose to entertain herself in such a manner. As, and as his composure convinced her that all was safe, her wit followed long. Chapter 7. Here you go. This big. It's been three pages. That's three pages. Dude, okay. Don't worry, we have 60 more chapters. I know. Um, Mr. Bennett's property consisted almost entirely. <laughs> Mr. Bennett's property consisted almost entirely in an estate of 2,000 a year, which, unfortunately for his daughters, was entailed. Was entailed in default of male. Of Hare's male and in and on a distant relation and their mother's fortune, though ample for her situation in life, could but ill supply the deficiency of his. Her father had been an attorney in Meryton, Meryton, and had left her four thousand pounds. 
they're all they're all they're all from London okay she had a sister married to him, Mr. Phillips, who had been a clerk to their father and succeeded him in the business, and a brother who settled in London in a respectable line of trade. The, Lon the, l the village of Longburn was only one mile from Meryton, at a most convenient distance for the young ladies, who were usually tempted with <laughs> thither three or four times a week to pay their duty to their aunt to the miller's shop just over the way. The two youngest of the family, Catherine and Lydia, were particularly frequent in these attract intentions. Their mind were more vague with their sisters and when nothing better offered a walk nothing off when nothing offered better. When nothing better offered. A walk to Meryton was necessary to amuse their morning hours and furnish conversation for the evening, and however bare of the news the country in general may be might be. They always contrived to learn some from their aunt. At present, indeed, they were well supplied both with news and happiness by the recent arrival of a militia regiment in the neighborhood. It was men. It was to remain the whole winter, and Milton was at headquarters. Their visits to Mrs. Phillips was now a product of the most inter interesting intelligence. Every day I added something to the knowledge of the officer's name and connections. Their lodgings were not long a secret, and at length they began to know the officers themselves. Mr. Phillips visited the mom, and this opened his, to his nieces a story Felicity unknown. Felicity unknown before. They could talk of nothing but officers and Mr. Bingley's large fortune, the mention of which gave animi animation to their mothers, was worthless in their eyes, who opposed the regiments on the on an in sale. After losing one morning through infusion of the subject, Mr. Bentley, Mr. Bennett coolly observed. For all that I can collect by your manner of talking, you must be two of the silliest girls in the country. I suspected at some time, but I am now convinced. Catherine was disconnected and made no answer, but Lydia, with, car with perfect indifference, continued to express her admiration of Captain Carter and her hope of seeing him in the course of the day as, she, as he was going as he was going the next morning to London. I am astonished, my dear, said Mrs. Bennet. That you be so ready to think your children your own children silly. If I wish to think slightly of anyone's of anybody's children, they sh it should not be my own. However, if my children are silly, I must hope to be always sensible of it. Yes, but as it happens, they are all of them very clever. That is the only point I flatter myself for which we do not agree. I hope that our sentiments coincided in every particular, but I must so differ from you to think of it as our two youngest daughters uncommonly foolish. Oh! Wait. I f wait. Is... No, that's still Mrs. Bennet. Yeah. Okay. My dear... Yeah, dude... Our youngest daughter is uncommonly full. No, that is Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bennett. Fuck, I mixed it up. Whatever. Whatever. My dear Mr. Bennett, you must not expect such girls to have such sense of their father and mother. When they get to our age, I dare say that they will not think about officers any more than we do. I remember the time when I would like to red coat myself very well. And indeed, I do so. So I do still at my heart, if I was a young, smart young colonel with four or five thousand a year, would want one of my girls, I shall not say nay to him. And I thought Colonel Forrester looked very becoming the other night to Sir Williams at, in his regiments. Mama, cried Lydia, my aunt says that Colonel Forrester's and Captain Carter do not go so often to Miss Watson's as they do when they first come. She sees them, not, she sees them very often standing in Clark's library. This is Mrs. Bennett was preventing, was prevented replying by the entrance of the footman with a note for Miss Bennett to come. To come, it came from Northfield, Netherfield, and the servant waited for an answer. Mrs. Bennett's eyes sparkled with pleasure, and she was e eagerly calling out with her daughter Red. Well, Jane, who is it from? Who is? What is it about? What does he say? Well, Jane, make haste and tell us. Make haste, my love. It is from Mr. Bingley, said Jane, and then read out loud. My dear friend, if you're not stuck in dispassion as to dying to die as to dying today, 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 with Louisiana and me, 
Louisa. Louisa? Louisa. Louisa and me. We shall be in danger of hitting each other for the rest of our lives. For a whole day. Days. Tit of that. Between two women can never end with a quite can never end without a quarrel. Come as soon as you cause you come as soon as you can I'll receive of this. My brother and the gentleman are to dine with officers. Yours ever. Caroline Bingley. With the officers <laughs> cried Lydia. I wonder I wonder my aunt did not tell us of that. <laughs> Dining out, said Mrs. Bennett. That's very unlucky. Can I have the carriage? said Jane. No, my dear. You better not go. You better go on. You better. You had better go on horseback because it seems likely to rain, and then you must stay all night. Is this the flirting between Jane and Lydia? Uh, it is the start of uh of Jane, um, like going over to Mister Bingley's. Also, Bingley's fucking first name is Caroline. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Jay, I will go up. Oh, oh, Caroline. Yeah, that's different from Charlotte. Yeah. Miss Caroline, Miss Charlotte, Miss and then. Oh, Miss Lucas is Charlotte. What up? Oh, no, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, t I told you. I told you his real name. The, like the first. Name. You're fucked, <laughs> dude. I am. I'm just so many characters. No, there's, there's so My many brain. Like that aren't correlating, so it just goes who okay, Elizabeth Bennett, if, if but I never think of it. What's the fucking novel? Like, and what's the play like? I don't I mean I wanna I'm gonna go look at it. No. Later, later. Because they both start at different points. Um That would be a good scheme, said Elizabeth. If you were so sure that they would not offer to send her home. Oh, but the gentleman will have Mr. Bingley's chase to go to the mountain, and the herds have no horse to theirs. I, w I had much rather go in the coach. But, my dear, your father cannot spare the horses, I am sure. They are wanted in the farm. Mr. Bennet, are they not? They are wanted in the farm much oftener than they can get them. But if you have got them today, said Elizabeth, my mother's purpose will not be answered. She did at last extort, extort from her father acknowledgement that the horses were engaged. Jane was therefore obliged to go on horseback, and her mother attended her to the door with so many cheerful prognos prognosis, prognosis, prognosis of a bad day. Her hopes were answered. Jane went up and gone long before it rained hard. Her sister were in ease for her. Her sisters were uneasy for her, but her mother was delighted. The rain continued the whole evening without intermission. Jane certainly could not back come back. This was a lucky idea of mine, indeed, said Mrs. Bennet more than once, as if the credit of making a rain were all of her own. Till the next morning, however, she was unaware of the facility of her cons contra contrasive. Breakfast was scarcely over when a servant, when a servant from Netherfield brought the following note for Elizabeth. My dearest Lizzie, I find myself very unwell this morning, which I suppose is an in impotent to my getting wet through yesterday. My f kind friends will not hear of my returning till I am better. They insist also on my seeing Mr. Jones, though do not be alarmed if if you should hear of this having me having been to me and expecting a sore throat and a headache. There is not much the matter with me. Yours, etc. Well, my dear said Mr. Bennet, when Elizabeth had read the note aloud. If your daughter should have a dangerous fit of illness, if she should die, it would be a comfort to know that in all this pursuit of Mr. Bingley and under your order. Oh, I am not afraid of her dying. People do not die of little trifling coats. She, sh she will be taken good care of. As long as she stays there and is all very well, I will go and see her I c if I could have the carriage. Elizabeth, feeling really anxious, was determined to go to her. That the carriage was not to be had, and she was not a horsewoman. Walking was her only alternative. She declared her resolution. How can you be so silly? cried her mother. As to think of such a thing in all this dirt, you will not be fit to be seen when you get there. I shall be fit to see Jane, which is all I want. 
Is this a hint to me, Lizzie? What are you talking about? Jane, Elizabeth just wants to see Jane because Jane's sick. What the fuck? Amazing. Like, uh, like no, she wants to walk the entire fucking time, the entire way, which is like probably like a day and a half. Yeah. <sighs> Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Don't even look at me. I did. Anyway. Bro, Miss and Bingley. You want to stop at chapter 8? I know, dude. I want to eat too. Um, Let me continue. Is this a hint to me, Lizzie? Said her father. To send for the horses? No, indeed. I do not wish to avoid the walk. The distance is far is nothing when one has a motive. Only three miles. I shall be back by dinner. I admire. It is three miles. She'll be back by dinner. Yeah, she will be, dude. It's not that much. Um. I admire the activity of benevolence, observed Mary. But every ill person's feeling should be guided by reason, and in my opinion, station always should be in proportion to what is required. We will go as far as mine with you, said Catherine and Lydia. Elizabeth uh, accepted the company, and the three young ladies set off together. If we make haste, said Lydia, as they walked along, perhaps we may see something of Captain Carter before he goes. In Mayton, they parted. The two youngest repaired to the lines, and one of the other wives. What? What? Okay, yeah. Uh, is she married already? No, but she's getting to know. Um, with yeah. Bingsley. Uh, and uh, yeah, but like, why is why is she sick over there? Okay, so she went over there. It, her her mother, uh, like Jane, was like, "Mom's gonna rain. I can't fucking go. Can you give me the carriage?" It's like, "No, no, no. Just go on the horse." And so, um, so Jane goes, gets sick, because it immediately rained afterwards that she that she left, and like the mom was like, "Yeah, she'll be fine. She won't die." Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. Manunya. <laughs> anyway, um, that's what happens so far. But sh uh, they are getting M Bingley and um, Jane are getting to know each other. They're getting to uh, like fall in love. Apparently, <laughs> so uh, this all happens off screen. So yeah, let me continue reading Jay. Darcy and Darcy. Anyway. In May 10, the party of the two youngest repaired to the longings of one of the officer's wives, and Elizabeth continued her walk alone, crossing fields after fields at a quick pace, jumping over stilts and springing over puddles with impatience activity, and finding herself at last with view within view of the house, with wearing ankles, dirty stockings, and a face glowing with the warmth of exercise. She was shown into the breakfast parlor where all but Jane were assembled and where her parents greeted a great deal of surprise that she would have walked three miles so early in the day in such dirty weather and by herself it was almost incredible to Mrs. Hurst and Mrs. Bingley. And Elizabeth was convinced that they had held her in contempt for it. She was received, however, very politely by them, and in their brother's manners there was something better than politeness. There was good humor and kindness. Mrs. Darcy said very little, and Miss Mr. Hurst said nothing at all. The form was divided between admiration and the brilliancy with which exercise had given her given to her complexion down to the occasion justifying her coming so far alone. The latter was thinking only to his breakfast. Her inquiries after her sister were not very favorable. I answered, Miss Bennet had fallen, had slept ill, and threw up, and th threw up, was very furious, not well enough to leave her room. Elizabeth was glad to be taken to her immediately, and Jane, who had only been withheld by the fear of giving a line of inconvenience from expressing in her note how much she longed for such a visit, was delighted for her at her entrance. Can Stream hear the water, dude? Uh, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, maybe like in the background. There we go. Okay. 
Or if you want to stop, dude. Okay, there you go. She was not equal, however, and too much conversation when Miss Bingley left them together. Could attempt a little besides expression of gratitude for the extraordinary kind she was treated with. Elizabeth silently uh, attended her. When breakfast was over and they were joined by the sisters, and Elizabeth began to think them herself. When she saw how much affection and solitude... Solitude. Solitude? Solitude. Oh, no. Wait. No, no, no. Stop. 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 You don't do shit. You don't do it. Okay. I'll wait back stream. All right. No. We're, we're done. Okay, anyway. Um, soli solitude. Sol solicited? Solicited? Solicited. The shirt for Jane. Mm, solitude? Solitude. The shirt for Jane. The apothecary came and having examined his. Mm, I don't, okay, whatever. Examined his patient, said, as might be supposed, that she had caught a violent cold and that they must endeavor to get the better of it, advised her to return to bed and promise her some draughts. The advice was followed very readily for the feverish, for the feverish symptoms increased and her head ached acutely. Elizabeth did not qu quit her room for a moment. No, when the other ladies were uh, often absent and the gentlemen being out. That was good. They had, in fact, nothing to go elsewhere. When the clock struck three, Elizabeth felt that she must go and very unwillingly said so. Miss Bingley offered her the carriage and she only wanted a little pressing to accept it when Jane testified such a con such concern in parting with her. Then Miss Bingley was obligated to convert the uh, offer of the chase to an invitation to remain at Netherfield for the present. Elizabeth most thankful consented, and her servant was dispatched to Longburn to acquaint the family with her stay and bring back a supply of clothes. Chapter 8 Elizabeth decides to stay and take care of Jane. We end here. We'll end here. Okay. Uh, Jane decides... Not Jane. Elizabeth decides to stay with Jane as she recovers from a violent cold. And then Mr. Darcy says, hey, stop and read it. Uh, uh, Mr. Darcy is there in the mornings, like, having breakfast. But, um, uh, Elizabeth has mostly stayed with mi with Jane in her room taking care of her. And that's it. Yeah, dude. The other one excited Mr. Darcy. The other woman, uh, accepts her politely and kindness, but don't really... Make an effort. Um, but I will be stopping here because I'm, I I'm happy with what we have so far. Yeah, I know I'm hungry too. Bye stream. Bye stream. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs>